Chapter 5 All day Mrs. Newcomb worked hard at her writing. Even in the evening, after dinner, she read what she had written to Mr. Newcomb. They sat in the living room. Sometimes Mr. Newcomb drew pictures of his wife while she was reading. The littles became interested in the story. They would rush through their dinner so they wouldn't miss anything. The littles' living room was in the wall next to the bigs' living room, near the ceiling. There was a hole in the wall between the littles' living room and the bigs' living room. The hole was about the size of a quarter. On the big side, it was covered with wallpaper. Mr. Little had punched tiny holes in the wallpaper. He used one of Mrs. Big's needles. Voices could be heard through the tiny holes. Most of the time, the hole was plugged up with a cork on the little side. As long as the cork was in the hole, no one could hear the littles. When the cork was taken out, the littles would be very quiet and listen. The cork was always out when it was story time. Mrs. Newcomb's soft voice would float up through the hole. The littles sat comfortably in their favorite chairs and listened. Sometimes Mrs. Newcomb read until it was past Lucy and Tom's bedtime. They would beg their mother to be allowed to stay up until the story was finished. Even Uncle Pete liked the readings. Wonderful story, he said. Very exciting. See, he wasn't happy with the Newcombs. The bad housekeeping, it worries me. The Newcombs were indeed bad housekeepers. Food was left around uncovered. Floors were not swept after meals. Garbage spilled out of the can. When the lid fell off, it wasn't put back on. All those crumbs, mark my words, Granny said, there will be mice. One day in June, Mr. Little rushed into the living room. He slammed the door behind him. Granny was right, he said. I've been hoping it wouldn't happen, but it has. They've come, the mice are here. What can we do, asked Mrs. Little. She locked the door behind her husband. First, you, Tom, see all the doors are locked, said Mr. Little. Tom ran to do as he was told. Mr. Little went quickly to the sofa. He pulled out a chest from under it. Don't go out alone, he said. Go armed at all times. Mr. Little opened the chest. He looked up at his wife. Who would think that this generation of Littles would have to open this weapons chest? Mrs. Little shook her head sadly. But Father, said Lucy, I don't know how to use a bow and arrow. Uncle Pete will teach you and Tom how to shoot, said Mr. Little. He was a crack shot during the mice invasion of 35. Uncle Pete, my father, and their brothers held off the mice from this very room until help arrived from the smallest on the road. That's when I get this limp said Mr. said Uncle Pete. A huge three-inch mouse broke through the door and grabbed me by the foot. He dragged me out of the room. My brother Tim, God bless him, came after me and shot him. Is that when Uncle Tim lost his life, said Tom? That's when it happened, said Uncle Pete. One of those big mice jumped from behind. I finally chased it off with my knife, but it was too late. Uncle Pete wiped his eyes. Poor Tim, he was the only little we lost that terrible year. We won't go looking for trouble with the mice, said Mr. Little. These weapons are for protection only. He brought out a bow with a quiver of arrows from the chest. On the wooden bow was carved, made in 1825 by Chase B. Little. Suppose they come after us, said Tom. He picked up the bow and tried to put the string on it. Maybe they won't, said Mr. Little, as long as there's plenty to eat. I'm for going out and attacking them, said Uncle Pete. Teach them a lesson before they start to bother us. The way I figure it, said Mr. Little, after a while, the newcomers are bound to find out that they have mice. When they do, they'll set traps. And that'll be the end of it.